My name is Akshay and I'm a research fellow and anaesthetics trainee currently working in Oxford. I am going to talk to you about our paper entitled Strategies to Minimise Intraoperative Blood Loss During Major Surgery. Perioperative bleeding is a major cause of morbidity and mortality in patients undergoing surgery globally. It is also a potentially modifiable risk factor and recognition of this has led to the concept of patient blood management which is defined as a multimodal evidence-based strategy consisting of three pillars which include treating anemia, reducing perioperative blood loss and improving tolerance to anemia. This is highlighted in figure one of our paper. In this paper we specifically focus on the second pillar which is minimizing blood loss and reducing bleeding and we have divided this into four categories which are organisational, surgical, anaesthetic and hemostatic strategies. Preoperatively, increasing numbers of patients are presenting for surgery on antiplatelet and anticoagulant medication, in particular the direct oral anticoagulants such as rivaroxaban and apixaban. Figure 2 of our paper provides a useful algorithm on how to manage these perioperatively, which we hope you will find useful for your departments. In summary, most DOACs can be withheld for 48 hours for most operations in the presence of normal hepatic and renal function. Aspirin can be continued safely for most procedures, whereas clopidogrel should be stopped for at least five to seven days. Intraoperative um, surgical strategies include the use of cell salvage and administration of tramexamic acid. We reviewed the evidence base behind both of these interventions in our paper in, and reputed bodies such as NICE and the Association of Phenistas have issued clear guidance on the use of cell salvage and tranexamic acid. Despite widespread use of tranexamic acid, there is still uncertainty regarding the optimal dose, route and timing of administration, and network meta-analyses are currently underway to address these. Anesthetic strategies that we discuss include permissive hypotension, central neuraxial anesthesia, patient positioning and avoidance of hypothermia. Hemostatic strategies include the administration of desmopressin, which increases factor VIII and von Willebrand factor levels. Additional agents which are of increasing interest include prothrombin complex concentrates and fibrinogen concentrates, particularly in patients at high risk of bleeding, such as those undergoing cardiac surgery. There are currently over 20 ongoing trials evaluating their use in patients undergoing surgery, and more information on their safety, efficacy and cost-effectiveness is available in the future. In summary, intraoperative blood loss remains a key concern for surgeons, anaesthetists and patients. We hope that you find our paper interesting and we hope that it will be useful for clinicians and theatre managers when setting up patient blood management pathways. We look forward to any feedback that you may have on this.